Hi, my name is Peter Froment with Emerson Swan. And I'm Kevin Shea, technical trainer at Emerson Swan. We're going to demonstrate how to pull back the refrigerant into the outdoor unit for service or maintenance work to the indoor units. Keeping in mind, if you are going to be doing any of this type of work, you need to be EPA 608 certified for refrigeration reclamation. And also, uh, we ask that you utilize the online resources, HireDucklessHelp.com and EmersonSwan.com. So before we get started, let's talk about some of the tools that we're going to need. First, we're going to need a gauge with service hose. We're going to need adjustable wrench. We're going to need our six-way, and also our ratcheting Allen wrench for the service port. So uh, we've unscrewed the cover. We're going to give it a little tap down, expose the service port. So what we have here is a one-to-one -one unit. So there's just a, a single uh, line set coming in. Um, and in this case, we're going to attach our uh, gauge to the service port. There's only one service port on a one-to-one -one, so it's easy to identify. However, it is on the suction line. Typically your suction line can be identified. It's typically a larger line uh, than the liquid line. I've removed the cap and installed a, uh, an, an adapter to uh, attach the uh, a hose to the service port. Now on a single one-to-one uh, -one unit uh, when we turn on the uh, outdoor unit, the compressor, we're going to draw the refrigerant in. Now, it, it's, it's pretty obvious it's only a single line set. When we get into the multi-units, you have a couple of options. Um, you have the ability to pull down individual line sets. If you had to work on a single head, you could pull down that, uh, that circuit and secure the circuit at the service ports. Or on, on the majority of the multi-units, you do have a manifold. So you're able to put a single connection and pull down all the circuits at the same time should that uh, uh, be the, the procedure that you want to do. Okay, so at this point I'm going to go ahead and attach to my service port. So as you may have noticed, as I attached the hose to the service port, there was a, a very tiny release of refrigerant uh, that's perfectly acceptable. That's called a de minimis release. Um, it's going to happen when you make that connection just momentarily. So uh, be aware of that. That's okay. Uh, sometimes it happens a little bit. Sometimes you can get it on quick enough uh, that you really won't get much of a release at all. We have the uh, gauge attached to the service port, so now the refrigerant is, is uh, freely flowing up into the gauge through the hose and we can see that we are pressurized and uh, uh, we're, we're ready to go ahead and prepare the lines to fire up the compressor and pull that refrigerant back down into the outdoor unit. At this point, we're going to open up the caps to access the service ports. Now, good practice, whether you're opening up a cap to a Schrader valve or opening up a cap to a service port, uh, get your ear down there and get a little listen. Because what, I, what, what I'm listening for is if I hear a little release of refrigerant, if I hear a little hiss of air, if you will, um, that would let me know that there might be some leakage at a service port or leakage at a Schrader valve that uh, uh, may need to be addressed. So I'm going to go ahead and get my wrench on the cap, pop it off. I didn't hear anything, that's a great sign. Now I'm gonna do it on the other line, on the suction line. Again, didn't hear any release, that's a very good sign. So I'm gonna take my ratcheting Allen wrench and go ahead and close down the liquid line, the smaller line. By closing off the liquid line, when we turn on the compressor, all we'll be doing is sucking the refrigerant back in. We won't be releasing it out to the system. It'll only be pulling in. So how do we know when we've pulled all the refrigerant back into the compressor? Well, that's what our gauge is for. So we're going to fire up the system. We're going to go ahead and inside and turn it on. And 
keep a close eye on our gauge and watch the pressure drop down to zero. When we see it hit zero, we're going to let it continue to run to pull into a vacuum. And once we're into a vacuum, that lets us know that we have pulled back all the refrigerant from the line set in the indoor unit into the compressor. So at this point, we're ready to fire up the compressor. And how we do that is we have Kevin going inside. He's turning on the indoor head. It's critical to understand that while we're turning on the compressor, we are limited as far as time-wise because we want to be able to pull this into a vacuum, but we don't want to damage the unit. So we need to be cautious with this. We got to make sure our time on this is minimal. I'm inside the trailer and I'm going to activate the unit simply by taking my remote and turning it on. I want to make sure I'm in cooling and we're all set and we can go back outside. However, let me just show you something. Your smartphone with the higher app, I wouldn't need to have to come inside the house. I could do this service work from outside simply by turning on the unit in my phone. So that could help with labor intensity, might save me having to bring two technicians out to the job site. Um, an added level of convenience. So we turned on the cooling there will be a, a, a slight uh, a compressor delay the fan will come on and in a minute we're gonna have the compressor will kick in and we're gonna keep an eye on our our uh, gauge actually the compressor this thing is so quiet the compressor is actually running uh, the gauge is pulling down as as we see we're pulling the refrigerant back into the outdoor unit and not allowing it to escape from the outdoor unit and we're pulling down our refrigerant pressure so uh, we're, we're at about 20 pounds and, and, and dropping. So it's just a matter of uh, patience at this point. So the gauge is at zero. We're just gonna give it another few seconds here to pull into a little bit of a vacuum. All right, it's pulled down into a negative vacuum. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and secure the service port of my suction line. Okay, so we are secured and what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull the service, disconnect outside so I don't have to run back in and shut it off. Take a look at my gauge, still holding down. We have just successfully pulled the refrigerant from the indoor unit and the line set into the compressor, secured the line sets, and are now holding all of the refrigerant in the outdoor unit. And we're ready to go ahead and do whatever work we need to do. Thank you for spending your time with us. We hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, Emerson Swan Hire, we're here for you. And that being said, don't forget uh, to use the Hire Duckless Help uh, app on your smartphone for all of the information, troubleshooting, line set, charge information, and also utilize emersonswan.com as a technical resource. Thank you. Thank you.